Hi population, welcome to Secret Wars TLDR. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. This is the show where we take all the tie-ins and all the chicanery going on with Secret Wars, and then we all each read a tie-in or two, and then we break it down and give it to you guys. And so there, you can know there what's is going a on. lot of chicanery going on. Oh my god, yeah. It's non-stop chicanery with Secret Wars. There's nothing too secret about it. I read Civil War number one, and I also read Spider Island number one, and Renew Your Vows number two. Ooh. But I'm only going to get into the nitty gritty with Civil War. Oh. And maybe Spider Island. Oh. And maybe. Renew a, a little bit of <laughs> Renew Your Vows. Yeah. Uh, I read uh, Age of Apocalypse number one. And I read 1872 number one, and Mrs. Deadpool and the Helen Commandos number two, but I will barely be getting into that. <laughs> For no reason, but. It's no, just, just to keep it short. time. Yeah, it's time. It's all time. time. Yeah. So, uh, I guess I'll jump in with Civil War number one, written by Charles Soule and art by Lionel Yu. Weird to say, because we've been saying for ten years, Civil War written by Mark Miller with art by Steve McNiven, but we're back in Civil War. First of all, uh, the fact that they got a major writer and a top-notch artist, Lionel Yu, who drew uh, Secret Invasion... Um, and many other books, but, you know, he's a major Marvel artist. It wouldn't be in any way surprising if, in an alternate history, Civil War was done by Charles Soule and, and Lionel Yu. So it's it's interesting that they were like, no, like let's take these two powerhouses and we'll put out this book. Because okay. probably it's going to be one of the number one sellers for the tie-ins for, for Secret Wars. Um, Civil War is not the Civil War you remember. In this one, uh, at the end of the original Civil War, uh, Cap gives up because 9-11 tackles him. And then gets shot on the courthouse sh- steps, and Ed Brubaker did a whole thing about a man in time. Uh, in this one, no. Uh, in this one, uh, there's a big climactic fight in the Baxter building, and then T'Challa screws over both sides and sets off a bomb in the Baxter building. And so both sides think that Cap or Iron Man, like the, the other, set it up. And then uh, everyone jumps into Cloak. And then Cloak teleports them out, but he also teleports the explosion, which blasts another city and destroys that too. Yeah. That's a big bomb, then. Doesn't that just restart the Civil War, then? It just never stops the Civil War. So the, okay. so the country is divided in half. Cap gets the West. He calls it the Blue. Iron Man gets the East. He calls it something equally stupid. And uh, Iron Man's city is, like, technologically superior, and it, uh, and it, and it's, oh, wait, like, as legitimately, it like, they actually get these, yeah, oh, no, like, Iron what Man happened is, what to the government? Oh, F that government. And this is all happening in one of the areas. Yes! In Secret War. In Secret War! It, so it's what, almost as though it's a what-if book, and there is no Secret one War. One of the areas in Civil War is just the United States? Yeah. Is it shaped like the United States? Uh, we don't really get into it. Oh. Okay. In That's fact, uh, nothing related to Secret Wars comes in at all. It's just a what-if book for Civil War. All right. So in this one, um, Miriam Sharp, the stupid idiot who starts Civil War in the first place, you know, her son dies in Stanford, Connecticut, she's like, Iron hey, Man, why won't you do anything? And then he does. And then it would have been awesome if she was a scroll, but she wasn't. She's just some stupid idiot. It's like, her kid. it's like Jaws? Yeah, it's like Jaws. She tries to, like, negotiate peace talks between Cap and Iron Man. Okay. Uh... Iron Man has She-Hulk as his right-hand aide, and Cap has Peter Parker as his right-hand aide. And the two of them go in, and they try to talk, and they both are pig-headed and and argumentative. And then there is a sniper that takes out Miriam Sharp by accident, supposed to kill Cap, but it doesn't, kills her. And they both are like, oh, you know, you don't believe, it's just so exhausting. Cap vs. Iron Man is so done to death. I'm so sick of this stupid rivalry. It's been ten years that these two... You don't get no... You don't get it! Shut up! Just stop. It's so obnoxious. And it's a civil war in as much as nobody wants to be fighting anymore except for Cap and Iron Man. Oh. And, like, they never listen to reason. They're completely unrealistic. It's just so stupid. I get Cap wanting to fight for his ideals. I don't get Iron Man wanting. No, it's, uh, I, actually, Iron Man has more of a legitimate fight. Iron Man's more tired of it than Captain America. Captain America is just so pig-headed and stupid. It sounds like those two should be sent to the Arcadium. Yeah. If that's what it's, the Arca- Ar- Arcadium? No, the Kilnesium. The Kilnesium. I just made my own thing. It's run by Arcade. Makes sense. I know. Call so, that now. Screw it. It's so... Stupid. The only thing that's interesting is that in this universe, Peter Parker and Mary Jane are married and have a kid. Really? Yeah. 
Apparently, uh, Charles Soule also agrees <laughs> that Peter Parker and Mary Jane should be together. Because right. what? Doesn't make him not Peter Parker. No. Or Spider-Man. By the way, they live in Iron Man's country, but, he but Spidey lives in Captain America's country, fighting against them. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, and yeah. Stark brought Mary Jane and their daughter to the peace talks to be like, Pete, I got your family. And not like, I got your family, haha. <laughs> it's more like, your family's here and they want you to stop. And Pete's like, I want to stop too. And but you're like, wrong. And he sees them and he's like, hugs them and then like, all hell breaks loose and he's like, I'll be back for you. I love you. I'm sorry. And then he goes, and he's like, it's like a, like Spider Falcon. He's got like wings and shit. That's fun. Yeah, he's a cool concept. This is a weird book. It's a weird book. Kind of interesting. Lionel Uzar is fantastic. Charles Soule nails the characters except for the fact that like, they are, Iron Man and Captain America are unrealistically pig-headed. And uh, that's the story. And then we now we who killed Miriam Sharp? So you know it's just going to be until Doom says to stop. It's, that's just so frustrating. Actually, the Secret Wars thing is actually more annoying than anything else because you know that Doom and this other big story is happening. Yeah, and it's just going to interrupt the flow of this whole story. Right, but I mean, like you know, all these books for the most part are like four or five part miniseries. Yeah, so you know, like your story is going to have that much to tell, then that's it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So no, it's true. knowing that going into it, I think is better than like being a part of an ongoing. Yeah. And then having it be interrupted by a, a big event like no, this. No, totally. So that said, I would pick it up. Honestly, I read the hell out of it. I liked it a lot. It was just wow. the characters were really like, Cap and Iron Man are annoying as hell, but everyone else is super cool. I was really not expecting you to like this. I kind of dug it. Uh, I'm sick of the Civil War concept, but if I got to read it, I'll enjoy it. And uh, I'm, inter I'm interested to see where it goes. And honestly, I think that Civil War did a way better job with the Pete Mary Jane kid thing. Interesting. Well, it's more interesting because like, they just exist. It's more like Pete and Mary Jane have a kid, and there's this really big story going on. As opposed to, no, it's all about Pete and Mary Jane. It, it's the same thing as Renew Your Vows. Renew Your Vows is also Pete and Mary Jane have a kid, but there's this big thing happening. But the crux of the book is that Pete and Mary Jane have a kid, and they're together again. Like, in one, that's the focus, and in the other, that's incidental. And it's, it's just like, it exists. It exists. It. Enjoy it. Yes. Yeah, and, it, and you do. It's just handled really tastefully. In Civil War, is it the same? Kid? Same kid, I think. I don't. I don't remember the name of the of the girl. I don't think they. Oh, they're both girls. Okay. Yeah, okay. they're both girls. They both have red Peter Parker is always destined to have after one more day a little girl with red hair, unless it's uh, twins. May May Day Parker, aka the Spectacular Spider Girl. Oh, I was thinking unless it's twins that are not actually his kids. Yeah, you got to take Civil War and say, what if it never ended? It's kind of a cool book. It's a great what if book. Cool. Spider-Man felt like a Secret Wars journal story, like in Done in One. Okay. I was really hoping it was going to be, but it's not. It's ongoing? It's ongoing. Well, it's a miniseries? Yep. Spider-Man number one was written by Christos Gage with art by Paco Diaz. It does a great job. It kind of harkens back to the whole Humberto Ramos art style, who actually drew the original Spider-Man, so it makes sense. Uh, but this one doesn't star Spider-Man. It stars Flash Thompson, who is a.k.a. Oh. Agent Venom, who is like Venom, but with guns and shit. Cool. It's like okay. Punisher meets Venom. Uh, and he's Fun. the main character, and it's just, what if the people of New York just kept being spiders? What if Spider-Man didn't save the day at the end? It's just another what-if book. What if Spider-Man didn't save the day at the end of the story? Well, it's like, not even what if. It's more or less like, how would it keep going? Yes, what if it never stopped? So it's just, you know, the Resistance fighting against an island of Manhattan full of spider people. Did them being spiders make their character any different? Yeah, they're mindless spider drones. Like, they're monsters oh. who work for the Queen. And Flash has mounted a resistance force of cool people, including Werewolf by Night. Yeah. So by day, he's a man-spider. But then by night, he's a werewolf who can help him. So he can only help at night? Yeah. And then they have to, like, put him away? He just, they just let him go. That's, like, that's fun. That's, like, yeah. a, that's like a werewolf. Yeah, that's exactly. Weird. And he gives them information that they can use to, like, go try and stop the queen. Oh, so he remembers stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, when, mm -hmm. he's, when he's a spider, does he not remember stuff? When he's a spider, he's just a mindless spider drone, but, like, the personality that he's... His regular personality is like taking a backseat. Oh, okay. Like, it just kind of like watches the car drive. Yeah, okay. it's it's being held captive inside of his mind. Exactly. Right. But, all right. But the mind of spider drone doesn't remember that he's werewolf by night. I can see everything that's matters. happening, but I can't factor. stop it. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't factor in. So, like, uh, Flash and his merry band of non spider people go to, like, try and find a cure. It's a trap, but Flash has another trap up his sleeve. And it's just, called a gun. Yeah, it's called blowing them away. Uh, which he does do, but to a lot of other people. Uh, when the superheroes start attacking, though, he's like, I've got a, I've got a fix for this. It's like him and Vision, you know, who can't turn okay, into a spider. Yeah. Uh, and uh, his, his, cute, his plan is, it's actually inspired by Werewolf by Night, where he grabs uh, 
the moonstone that turned John Jameson into Man Wolf and puts it on Captain America. So he turns into Cap Wolf, who's actually a character in old school Marvel. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, Captain America turned into a werewolf one time. So <laughs> in this, but like the idea being, you know, werewolf by night, the spider thing doesn't affect him because he's a monster. You know? And spiders aren't monsters. Well, spiders are spider monsters. Okay. But I'll turn Captain America, who is a normal spider, into a werewolf now. So now it's Cap Wolf. And so, like, supernatural power supersedes... Yes, you're the, the, the science behind Thank God, powers. because if it was suddenly a Cap Spider Wolf, oh, that, that would be, be really messed I, I think up. it would be a Cap Wolf Spider. Yeah. Nobody wants to deal with a Wolf Spider. No, they no Wolf Spiders are jumpers. Yeah. yeah. So, they, uh, they use the Michael Morbius formula on Captain Marvel and turn her into Captain Marvel, who's a vampire. And they pour the lizard formula into the Hulk and turn him into a lizard Hulk. Oh, uh, why didn't they, like, kill him and then sew his body parts back together with bolts out of his neck? Because they already did that with the Punisher. Yeah, he's Frankencastle. So they turn all of their allies into the Sinister Six, basically. They just use Spider-Man monster villains and turn their superhero friends into monster versions. Wait, Man-Wolf? Man-Wolf is a Spider-Man villain. Oh. Yes. I didn't know. Uh, so, but it's a great concept. The idea, I think, is that Peter Parker died, so, like, whatever. So it's almost like Agent Venom has his own Howling Commandos. Yes. Okay. It's Agent Venom kind and of. the Howling Commandos. <laughs> kind of. Or it's, like, Agent Venom and the Howling Avengers. Well, that sounds really fun. You said it was boring. I, like, well, because I was hoping it was gonna stop. Oh. But, like, the last, you know, it's funny, I was like, okay, can we wrap this up? And then we got the last page reveal, I'm like, okay, I want to see the rest. But it doesn't feel like it can last more than two issues. Well, let's see. But we'll find out, because Chris Dusk Gage knows how to write Spider-Man, Marvel continuity. Like, he loves... Where's like, Spider-Man during all this? He died. I mean, it could be a long book, like, much longer than you expect. I hope not. <laughs> he died. They beat him. That's why the Spider-Island thing never stopped. Uh, I also read Renew Your Vows, number yeah. two. How was that? Better than the first one. Okay, cool. Uh, the Power Pack makes a secret appearance, which is fun. Power Pack is like a group of kid, t- of kid-, of kid superheroes. Like age nine, ten, like the BK Kids Club. Ye- no, no, they're lame. Power Pack's cool. The Power Pack's cool. They're, they're like they're they're like. How come that's not a kids show? How is that not a kids cartoon? <sighs> yeah, good question. Like you have a bunch of kid age superheroes. Yep. Oh. Like one can turn into mist. The other one can like make energy. It doesn't matter. They're like the, and they're a family. They're like brothers and sisters. This could be all over Disney XD or. Whatever. Oh, it's unbelievable that there isn't a thing. But anyway, the Power Pack. Right. Uh, oh, and they're they're teaching. Uh, Anna not to like use her powers. Her she has powers, of course. And uh, and she keeps thinking that there's a monster under her bed. That's a shadow. Is it Venom? Of course, it's Venom. Oh, he hasn't appeared yet, but <gasps> it, it's Venom. Oh, and uh, Spider Man has PTSD from murdering Betty Ross, which is like, yeah, yeah, he would. Okay. Like, cause he killed a guy, and that's not Spider Man. Right. And Dan Slott's like, yeah, I know. It would totally fuck him up, and it did. Right. Renew Your Vows number two. It's better than number one. If you were on the fence, I'd say pick up number two. Uh, Just number two? No, you, you can pick up number <laughs> one, too. Like, the fact is, like, it, it's it's a weird mixed bag, because the marriage and the kid and blah. Regardless of how you feel about it, it's a neat idea, and they're doing something cool with it. Kubert's art looks a little better than it did last time. Oh, good. So, But it's happening better in Civil War. Civil War is way better. Civil War deals with Spider-Man having a family more interestingly than this. Okay. That said, Slot is having a good time. He's taking him out for a spin. Yeah. This, this freedom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, Charles Soule's like, oh, the Spider-Man is on? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> so, you know, I read all these spider books, and they all were kind of in, kind of fun and rewarding. I, I enjoyed them. You're just thwipping all over the I place. I was. I was bebopping and thwipping all over the place. Anyway, Gross. so those are all my books. Uh, you can take them or leave them, but I kind of dug them. <laughs> uh, so I did Age of Apocalypse, written by Fabian Nicieza and drawn by Gerardo Sandoval. Uh, this was very much a book that I was looking forward to because I actually have some of the volumes of the trade Age of Apocalypse. Uh, something I got a whole long time ago. I think it was given to me by my parents for like my 12th, 13th birthday. Just like a tiny trade that I had no idea what was going on. But I was like, this is awesome! Yeah. So I really got into that stuff. Um, yeah, I was like, when I saw that on the list, I'm like, uh, and you're going to read Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> I was like, yes! I was, <laughs> it's the only book that Ben would have a frame of reference I know. For. <laughs> I like, I, when, when that came up, I was like, you should tell him I'm doing that. Yeah. Just, uh, so he's going to read Age of Apocalypse. I'll be like, ah. You're going to read Spider-Man. <laughs> 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 Spider-Man. 
Open world sucks. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> and they're like, you know, I didn't even understand what Age of Apocalypse was. You know, it's that blue lip guy, when that's why he's called Apocalypse. Yeah, right? he's just a dark side. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how'd it go? It's really fun. I mean, there are some interesting parts to this where um, Holocaust is there. Holocaust is one of the four horsemen of Apocalypse's army. Um, incredibly powerful, incredibly strong. I'm getting. I'm going to get into spoiler territory, so Let's you're going to know some stuff. Yeah, I ruined all those other books. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, we, I don't think we can spoil these. They're not really ongoing. No, okay. That's true. So this is the number one, and right off the bat, you've got these resistance fighters, just regular flat scans. Well, some are regular flat scans, and some are just uh, some mutants that you're not aware of fighting against Holocaust, and Holocaust is wrecking them. When suddenly the X Men jump in, and I'm talking Storm, Cyclops. Uh, Iceman, the fight breaks out, and Holocaust is just whooping. I mean, he's kicking ass left and right, and suddenly his containment suit breaks. Like, Colossus and Storm just pummel him with weather and (laughs) iron flesh. I was gonna say, you said pummel, I was like... Storm's like, wham! Oh! Oh, Mistress of the elements! No, but they're kicking butt, and they break his containment suit, and he's just pure radiation. And you're like, this was a bad idea, right? Mm -hmm. No. Iceman comes in and just freezes his whole body. Oh. It was amazingly drawn work? and coolly drawn. Yeah. No. Oh. He's yeah. frozen, but they, there's still like light coming from inside, and then there's just a giant explosion. Yeah, but... Oh. And we don't hear from those experts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We also don't hear from, a, uh, from Holocaust, Holocaust anymore. Holocaust is done. They're like, Holocaust is dead. Yeah. And at least he took care of some of those annoying X-Men. But we got this one mutant that we wanted, and his name is Cypher. And Cypher's a kid. Yeah, Cypher? Yeah. Doesn't he know languages? Yeah. Say, doesn't Cypher kind of suck? Yeah. <laughs> and this is also what reminds me of a 90s book where it's just like, oh, we have all of these cool plot points, but all the hope lies in this child. Right. Mati's going to save the friggin' day. And I'm like, all right, tell your story. <laughs> You might as well. So Cypher's been kidnapped by Sinister, uh, brought to Apocalypse, and they're like, you know, he is the most power, like, he's the key to figuring all of this stuff out. And we're not really sure why. We can't figure out exactly what's going on. But once people start talking, and uh, Cyclops and the Prelates all go to, and the Prelates are like this super-powered, I don't know, team that sort of control a lot of the higher-ups of the mutants that Apocalypse has reign over. Mm. They're like his A-team, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, Cyclops, Havoc, a couple of other mutants that didn't get names in the book. (laughs) Because it's mostly just Cyclops and uh, Scott and Alex Summers. Mm -hmm. They're the important ones. Uh, And, of course, Cyclops is still missing an eye. Yes, he's got that, like... He's got sunglasses, but, like, one of them's gone. So now he's an actual Cyclops. Does he still have big hair? Yes, oh, he's got the big, long hair. It's Good, awesome. Okay. And everyone has really big hands. <laughs> like, big gloves, big hands. It's a very 90s thing for them to do, where, like, I'm striking a pose, and all of my body parts have to really be accentuated. So it's really working out. Like, yeah. it's a very fun book. It feels 90s, it looks 90s, and it's popularizing a and it's huge... it's building up. And, book. oh, and you figure out that Cypher, when people... This was the strange thing, that I didn't understand Cypher's power could do this. When people are talking, his ability to, like, connect languages or understand all forms of communication means that he can read the subtext of what people are saying. <laughs> so when people's okay. speech bubbles are talking and they're just going back and forth in a conversation, letters are starting to be highlighted. Oh. And I'm like, what? It kind of made no sense to me at first. And then, and the way they put it up, it did make any sense. You weren't supposed to be able to tell what it pulled out. Gotcha. So it's not like if you read all the letters, you're like, clearly this is what that is. Yeah, you're, that you're, you're meant to be... Eventually, yeah. he just understands what the message is, and it's the virus will wipe out all mutants. And I really feel like you don't need a superpower or a, a mutant gene. Exactly, but in this, it's not and actual I, subject. I, who right. Would, yeah, so... It's like everyone knows that the mutant virus is going to wipe out... It's like the truth mm-hmm. of the universe... But people but, don't so know it. It's like he's kind of telepathic, but it's through language that he can Yeah. Manage. The answer is bullshit. <laughs> he's doing it because the writers are like, well, he has to be the key, and this has to be the secret that everyone knows. Because well, so he's the cipher, here. Yeah, because yeah. he's the key. It's, so like, really, and by the it's way, like he's reading The Matrix. Uh-huh. I see. All right. It's dumb. Okay. But it looks cool. It looks cool. That sounds a lot like every 90s book I own. Exactly. The character's fantastic. But, uh... Magneto comes in at the end, they're like, you have a hostage, the boy. 
We want him. So please, resist us. And he's huge. Like, Magneto is jacked. And he's got, of course, big hands. And there's Wolverine. And Blink. And... Is uh, Rogue there? Is Rogue's Rogue? there. Ah, oh, it's great. He's getting on a regular basis from Rogue now. Oh, and uh, it's right. Frost. Yeah. Like, everyone's there. And everyone's being awesome. And there's also a character called Burner. Who, if I remember correctly from Age of Apocalypse, was never Burner. He was Sunfire. Mm-hmm. But... Or Sunspot? No, Sunfire. Sunspot. Uh, Sunfire? Sun, there's, two, there's two characters. Regardless, the book looks awesome, and it's like they created it just to give us these cool images, so I'm on board for that, because it's going to be short, it's going to be over, I'm happy with it. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start with, I'll just start with um, Mrs. Deadpool and the Howling Commandos, since right. I'm going to go into that a little bit less, which was written by Jerry Dugan with art by Salvador Espin, same team that did the last issue, right. so... But this book just, it just keeps going. It's the same, like, high flying pace, a lot of fun. Like, mm. we just, we just keep going. We got a couple of twists and turns in this book. Mm. Uh, Deadpool's not in it as much until the end. Like the ghost of Deadpool. The ghost of Deadpool doesn't yeah. do as much narration. He's in it a little bit. But, like, it, you don't really miss it because, I mean, like, I loved when he showed up. Let's, let's be honest. But, like, yeah. the characters themselves are really, uh, humorously written and they have, like, are, like, weirdly their own voice. But, like, I, I, I don't know. It's so strange because I don't know these characters at all. Yeah. But, I mean, um, this Marcus the Centaur, I am, like, easily, like, I'm like, you're funny. He's the diabetic one. <laughs> He's the like, diabetic. Marcus the Centaur. That's his only weakness. He's is... diabetes. He's invulnerable because he has the venom suit. Well, then it doesn't matter. He just dr- eats a whole lot no, of oatmeal. No, no, no. As long as his, as long as his blood sugar is managed, he's invulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, just then oatmeal. But, like, he's hilarious. Like, at one point, like, it's, like, they're having a fight, and I think he says, like, it's it's clomper in time. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, this, he's, I, like I said, like, this book is, it's really funny to me. Like, she had, remember earlier I mentioned she had the head of Medusa? Yes. Yeah, this time around she goes to use it and they, like, they switched it out, like the Howling Commandos, the mummy, switched it out and instead she had, like, a, it was like a watermelon with, like, bananas hanging on <laughs> it. And she's like, <sighs> she drops on the floor and Marcus is like, that, that natural sugar could have easily <sighs> mitigated my diabetes. Right. I'm like, so it gets this kind of stuff, I'm like, I love this story so much and, like, they're just having a good time, and there's clearly a plot, and, like, uh-huh. we're, we're going to go along on this this fun ride, and, like, Deadpool comes in at the end and has a hilarious moment where um, Sheikla, like, kisses World by my, Night, and he's like, oh, I better get in there! <laughs> and then he's, like, trying to, like, interact with him, and he's like, they can't see me. Oh. And he's like, it's like that, it's like that Christmas movie. It's a wonderful <laughs> knife. He's like, that's it. At least I don't have a, a guardian angel, and then, like, this other guy shows up. <laughs> Deadpool, like, punches <laughs> So, That's fun. look, if you're looking to have a really good time and, like, deal with a book that literally has nothing to do with what's Anything, going on yeah. in the Secret World's main title, um, by the way, there was a moment where I thought we were going to, I was going to be sad, but I wasn't, because, like, they go through the River Styx oh. to where the, the dead are, and I was like, they're going to put Doctor Strange, Sarah there. Strange there, but they didn't. I was like, I was looking at every single person, I did not see him, so, mm. we're good, we're good. I just had a nice time. We all had a nice time. Well, maybe that's a clue. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, like it's a lot of fun. It's just it's just a silly book that is like really well written to me. Like I don't know, it's so like it's so like it's tongue in cheek and it's ridiculous. As long as you understand that going into it, you're gonna have a lot of fun. That's great. And like they're just doing a good job over there. Cool. Do a good job, <laughs> Dugan. Yeah. So Dugan much. Dugan a good job. Yeah. Uh, what? Anyway, eighteen seventy what? Speaking of Jerry Dugan, 1872 is also written by Jerry Dugan. Oh. Apparently, I just like Jerry Dugan. That's not a surprise. A lot. With art by Nick Varela, and the cover is by Alex Maleev. Oh, cool. I have to mention that because I love this cover. Like, holy shit, I love this cover. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. And that's not even the coolest part of the book, let's be honest. Oh, good. How rare is that for, like, <laughs> really yeah, ex- it's true. Like, sometimes I'm really excited about a cover and the inside's great, and sometimes I'm really excited about the cover and yeah, it really sucks. Um, this cover's great. It's awesome. And I love this book. Good. Because here's the thing. I love 1602, right? I think we all know that. I love 1602 because it's the Marvel Universe in the year 1602. 1872 is the Marvel Universe in the year 1872. Right. In in the West. Cool. So it's like they made a book for me. <laughs> well, it's like Old Man Logan, but... It's no. actually in the past. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not even remotely like Old Man Logan. Don't listen to Ben. We're we, saying it's Wild West. Yeah. Kind of. Old I Man mean, Logan is a Western. It is a Western, but not as much as this is a Western. Fine. Ha- 
Tell me if you've heard this story before. <laughs> there's a small town. It's right? full of dollars. <laughs> There's a, there's a kind of a sleepy town area that was built up by a mining company and, um, you know, a, a gentleman came in and was kind of the hero of the town, became the mayor, became corrupt. Mm -hmm. The town itself is teetering the edge of corruption. The governor will do nothing because he's in on the corruption. Mm -hmm. Only the sheriff really stands between the town, like, between the corruption and, like, the town's complete and utter destruction. Yep. And um, he, you know, meets a Native American friend and, like, you know, is just dealing with justice because that, that Native American friend is going to be lynched and he saves him because he's like, no, we got to go to the courts and the mayor and the governor had enough of the sheriff and mm -hmm. kind of all hell. Often? Him. Yeah, or, or would like to. Right. So it's literally every Western. Yes. Right? Yeah, like Lone Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Even Blazing Saddles. <laughs> exactly. It really is. Um, but, it, but then put Marvel characters in it. Awesome. So we have... And I got the thing about sheriffs. Apparently, I got Sheriff Steve Rogers. Yep. Of course, mm -hmm. he he lives by the law. Right. And like he's this great line where he talks about his sheriff badge. He's just like, this is this is the law. This is what I represent. Mm -hmm. Is um, it is it his shield? No, it's literally it's just is a it sheriff's huge badge. and he uses it. <laughs> yeah, and he throws it at people. Yeah. No, um, I was just hoping it was like a little cat like shield. shield. Yeah. That would um, be amazing. And in because. That's pretty much what happens in the book. Okay, let's be honest. Like, I would rather you guys read this than me tell you everything that happens. So yeah, instead, I'd true. rather talk to you about the characters that you're going to find let's in this it. book. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, the town drunk Tony Stark. <laughs> I mean, he's also kind of well to do, and he clearly has some sort of business, but he drinks all the time. Mm -hmm. He used to be an arms maker. Oh. He makes dark rifles. Yep. Um, rifles. Which is hilarious because at one point they get into a scrape and. Sh uh, and Sheriff Steve, I said Sheriff Strange. I am so obsessed. Um, I, yeah. And Sheriff Rogers is like, you know, it's time for you to pull that piece I nose up your sleeve. And he's like, yeah. And he's got one of those things that like shoots out. And he's like, I made some modifications that I'm regretting. And it like shoots out a flask. It's a flask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funk. Later. And he does. He takes a drink as they're running. Yeah. Um. There's uh Doctor Banner, mm -hmm. who's the town physician, and he owns Mister Fixit's apothecary. Oh, Mister Fixit. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. The Native American, I had to look up because they had a name, but he also had like a necklace on that I thought was like a T'Challa type necklace, but it's not. Mm. Um, it's Red Wolf, uh, yes. which I looked up and I was like, oh, that's an actual Marvel character. Yeah, and they're going to be rolling Red Wolf into the all new, all well, different there Marvel. there you go. Um, and so he features heavily here. Um, the mayor is Mayor Fisk. Oh, sweet. And he is full on. He's just Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk. <laughs> he's white <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. And he's huge. <laughs> Um, that's exactly him. That's exactly. Amazing. Mayor Fisk, of course, has his, like, band of ruffians. The governor is Governor Roxon. Oh, God. And that's the Roxon Mining Company. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds all right. We also make a couple of fun little hints and mentions of things, like they mention the Widow Parker. Oh. We also even get a, a mention, or a visual, and a mention of the Vision. Oh. Because the, it's the Vision of the Future, and it's a fortune-telling machine that Tony Stark <laughs> built. <laughs> 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 That's I crazy. was not expecting that. Yeah, that's um, cute. I was like, how can you have the vision? Yeah. The fact oh. is, like, when you open the book, you're going to be greeted with a map mm. of the town. Okay. And there's so many things on there. Like, Sal, you're going to, like, it's going to, like, make you blind. But it's awesome. The whole book is a lot of fun. It's it's gritty. The art is really, really super gritty. Like, it looks fantastic. It fits with a Western-style book. Um, it even, like, the coloration of it, it feels like there's almost this, like, layer of filth. Good. It's really, really cool. It's just so much fun. There's a saloon, and ah, mm -hmm. it's just it's everything. It's everything you might want for a western. Um, and you know you're gonna have some team ups. You know oh, that. Great. And in in the end, um, Fisk gets a telegram from Mayor Roxon. Mm. Of course, because Mayor his telegrams. Yeah. Um, and that he's he's sending some reinforcements. Oh, and great. we get a nice last page reveal of four reinforcements who have shown up, mm. and you know. Are they silhouetted, or do you see them? Oh, no, you see them. Well, who it... are they? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, good. The fact is, like, I know I've said a lot of books are, like, my favorite so far. Yeah. This one truly is my favorite, and this was another one of the books that I'd been waiting for yeah, to come out. Yeah, I really out. expected this to come out a lot sooner. I did, too, and, like, this was one of the ones that when the map first came out and they mentioned that this was going to be a book, I was yeah. like, this this is so what I want right now, and it did not disappoint. That's so, great. So, I recommend you to pick it up, because, like, seriously, like... It's 
not about any. I don't think it's about any particular story, right? Right. It's just like no, a, it's just, just its own story. That's what's so great is that it's not going to be like an adaptation of. No, it's it's just very gratifying and an interesting take on the Marvel universe. So I would recommend you pick it up. Awesome. I would love to see this as an animated movie. Like as soon I was as I opened say up, that I was too. like, "Oh yeah, my yeah. god!" Yeah. When you mentioned that, I was like, I heard Marvel after San Diego Comic Con said something about like they want to start doing more animated. Well, they should do this because this is great. Yeah. Nice. Sounds awesome. <laughs> There you have it, gentlemen and ladies. It is uh, the Mar- Marvel Secret Wars TLDR from us. Uh, it's the week six, I guess, six or seven of the tie-ins. And so mm-hmm. here are a bunch of tie-ins for you. You can take them or leave them, but most most of them I think we all really recommend it. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. I'm sorry for your bank accounts and your wallets uh, because, you know. <laughs> well, at least we tell you like what parts we liked about it. You can make better informed decisions. Exactly. So yeah. you're on the fence. Yeah, take it or leave it. Here it is. Knowledge! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so I'm, much for I'm more about action. Mm. Action! Because my book didn't have much good knowledge in it. <laughs> it's just a we're, fun read. We are giving the knowledge. <laughs> oh. 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 Knowledge. God damn it. All right, guys. We're wearing we'll that one. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time in another episode of Secret Wars TLDR. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We'll see you guys later. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm a sheep. You are a sheep, yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> I will not be a sheep next week. Okay. 1872. So good it will make you forget that a certain character died.